and welcome to John Park's workshop. Hello everybody. Uh, I hope things are going awesome for you today. It is uh, rainy here in Southern California, which is uh, something I don't really know how to deal with. So uh, in order to deal with it, I have just taken a sip of overly hot tea. Burned my mouth. I'm not uh, typically, hey, Donald Bell, Maker Project Lab over there on YouTube. Hello, Donald. Uh, yeah, I usually, as a lot of you might know, I'm, I'm a coffee drinker by uh, nature, by design, by birth. I was meant to drink coffee, but sometimes I like tea. Tea is always so damn hot. Why is tea always so hot? Uh, hey, thanks, Yannick. Yeah, I've got this cool shirt my daughter gave me for Christmas, which is this Patch Bay shirt, this sort of Eurorack synthesizer. I guess it could be for any kind of modular. Uh, and uh, hello to all the people in our Discord chat, too. Greetings, everybody. Uh, so let's get to it, shall we? Uh, so what have we got going on here today? I'm going to pop over here to my jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com. We've got a really cool jobs board. You can go there and uh, you can hunt for people. You can hunt for jobs. It's totally free. Uh, you can post your resume if you're looking for work, if you're a company or a person looking to hire a contractor or an employee or part-time or full-time or who knows what, that's the place to do it. So go check out jobs.adafruit.com. Seriously, why are you waiting? Uh, so the other thing I wanted to hit you with is a coupon code for the store. You can use this one today. It's lots of knobs. Lots of knobs is going to get you 10% off in the Adafruit store on anything that you desire. Unless what you desire is gift certificates, software, or subscriptions. Those you won't get a discount on. But you can still buy them. Uh, but head on over to the Adafruit store and you will find loads and loads of good stuff. Our, uh, our lady Ada has been on a tear designing cool new stuff. So my gosh, there's loads and loads of great things. I can hardly keep up. Um, Today's project is going to involve the Grand Central, which I know we've only put out, I think, 50 of them in sort of a beta uh, period, but we're going to be making loads and loads more of them, and there's lots of other new stuff along the way coming up. So use this coupon code, lots-of-knobs, and that's going to get you 10% off in the store. Hey, speaking of the store, let's talk about a product of the week, shall we? 
so the product of the week this week is this little beauty. This is the Alligator Clip NeoPixel Strip. So uh, we actually took this as a suggestion from the community. Uh, there were some educators who were using the Circuit Playground Express along with Make Code to teach. And they said, hey, we love to use NeoPixels. We've got the NeoPixels built on the board, but we want to use external ones, and we do not want to have people uh, soldering connections right onto the Circuit Playground Express or just kind of twisting them on there with a bare wire. So we had these alligator clip NeoPixel strips made. In fact, I've got one right here. Uh, we're going to look at it in a second, but let's see. Can I easily? Probably not, but what the heck. Let me do it anyway. I want to show you. I've got... Um, I'm not sure why I did this, but here you go. I took a Circuit Playground Express that has a uh, Circuit Playground Express case on it, and I attached a little kind of knockoff GoPro bike mount thing, and I've just got this hooked up to a pipe, a little galvanized three-quarter pipe that I have coming up out of my workstation desk here, just so I could clip that. Um, you can't see this right now, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to clip that there, and now I've got a nice NeoPixel strand coming off of my Circuit Playground Express, it just clips right onto there. So that's the product of the week, Alligator Clip NeoPixel Strip. There's two kinds, I think, that we sell in the store. Uh, and those are a one meter uh, length and a half meter length. And I think they are alternately the 30 per meter and the 60 per meter spacing. I think they both come with the same number. It's just how long it is. So go check it out. Uh, now, the reason I actually hooked this up is a little something I want to show you called the Make Code Minute. All right, hey, there it is. So for today's Make Code Minute, what I wanted to do is talk about using an external uh, NeoPixel strip on your Circuit Playground Express and then coding it with Make Code to run a what we call photon graphic back and forth on the NeoPixel strip. There goes an airplane. That is a loud one. We're going to edit this when we do our Make Code Minute, because can you even hear me? I don't think so. <clears throat> I'm going to get some more delicious tea. Hold on. It's still hot. I, ha I think it has something to do with thermal mass. I think when you pour hot water through a lot of coffee grounds, it cools it. That's my theory. All right, so. For today's Make Code Minute, I want to talk about using Photon on the Circuit Playground Express to run a colored light up and down a NeoPixel strip. So you're familiar with a lot of the ways that you can run NeoPixels. Photon is sort of like the turtle graphics language. So if we look at our uh, Make Code session here, here you can see what I'm doing. First, I'm setting up an external NeoPixel strip on pin A1. And I'm actually setting it up with 32 pixels, even though I only have 30. I need a couple buffer ones uh, to deal with the turnaround of this, of this graphic because of how it works. Uh, then I'm turning all the pixels off with black. Then I am setting a photon position at zero, and that's the uh, first pixel on the strip. And I'm setting the photon color, the pen color, to purple. Uh, now what I do in this forever loop is I am going to repeat this 30 times. I'm going to set the pen down, move forward by one pixel, and then I'm pausing a small amount that I tuned. Uh, so what that's going to have the effect of is moving a pixel down the strand, but since it's photon, it actually drags a color behind it. When I get to the end, I do a little bit of gymnastics to flip the pixel around without blinking the other end, and then come back. So here I'm going to start it up, and you can see it in action. You won't see both ends of it, but there you go. You can see I've got this pixel running, and it's drawing a purple line behind it on one direction, and then it's erasing that purple line in the other direction. And you can imagine that's some code that could get pretty complex, but with the photon code, it's pretty easy. So on my turnaround, I repeat this 29 times. I set the pen down uh, to an eraser so it gets rid of that purple, and then I move forward, get to the other end, and flip it back around. And so that is how you can use Photon with Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code to create some cool animation on an external NeoPixel strip. And that is your Make Code Minute.
so just in case, a little extra on top of the, uh, the Mako Minute on that, just in case you're wondering what some of those little shenanigans I'm doing there, flipping around, if you look at my code here, um, the way the photon works, the photon is actually two pixels. Uh, it's a brighter white one and a slightly less bright white one, and that's actually to let you know what direction the thing is heading. It's kind of like an arrow. Uh, and because of that, when I get to the end, if I just immediately turn around, we don't ever really reach the end. So that's why I'm overshooting past the 30th pixel to 31. I'm actually going to 32, flipping, and then coming back. So it's a little funny, a little weird to get used to, but if you take the time uh, and play around with Photon and really get it to do what you want. It's, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely kind of uh, a partial dimension of logo or turtle graphics, uh, but in the real world on some LEDs. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, a question we got in the YouTube chat, let me get rid of that there, um, is do we need soldering for regular NeoPixel strips with Arduino? Um, you know what? To answer your question, I'm actually going to check my, let's see, this might break the world, but I'm going to try to uh, create a black hole here for a second, and then I'm going to fix this, uh, if it'll let me. I'm going to fix this to look at a web browser, because I want to show you some of the different NeoPixels we have that will work with, with and without soldering. Uh, so pardon me for a second while I configure that to a Firefox window. And sure, there's one. Oh, that's that one. All right. Well, let's get a different one. And that's your chat. That's your YouTube chat showing up right there. All right. So let me configure. Okay. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Um, so here you go. Here's a Firefox that I have lost. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, so if I go back to NeoPixel strips here, you'll see we now have uh, your NeoPixels with some different connectors built onto the end. So there's the alligator clip style. Let me make sure you can see this. Yes. And, whoops, we also have one with a Stemma connector on it. Where'd it go? Let me look and see if we called it that. No, we didn't call it that. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right, I'm not finding it right now. So if we do find it, or if someone finds it, put a link in the chats. Uh, because we do have some with wires pre-built onto them uh, that can plug into something, and then normally you'll have bare wires on them. So uh, we have a couple of different options with those, but the uh, alligator clip ones are definitely nice because you can, you can, without soldering, hook them up to just about anything. Uh, okay, so let's see. I think that is uh, our cue to move into our project of the week. So for the project of the week, uh, let's pop this up. So here what we've got is a Grand Central, you can see there with the cool uh, Constellation graphics by Phil B, uh, lifted sort of from Grand Central Station itself. And then on top of it you can see I've got a Mega Proto Shield. Uh, so the, if you didn't know, the Grand Central is the same form factor as an Arduino Mega, so we can use um, shields with it. Uh, there aren't that many shields for Mega in, in my, uh, as far as I know, but this is one of them. And so this is a proto shield. Uh, I have another one here somewhere. So this is what it starts out life as, is this blank shield. And so with a little bit of wiring gymnastics, what I did was I hooked up 12, or rather 16, uh, of these potentiometers. These are 100K potentiometers, you could use 10K, 100K, 200K, anything in that range will work well for this. Uh, and the reason I did this is because the uh, Grand Central not only is awesome because it's running at 120 megahertz with an M4 chip on it, at SAMD51 M4 chip, uh, but it's got 16 digital uh, or analog outs. So ADCs, analog to digital converters, uh, ins and outs rather. Um, are all these outs? No, two of them are outs. I'm a liar. 
Two of them are outs, A0 and A1, but all of them, A0 through A15, can be used as analog ins. And so I decided to, what the heck, go ahead and populate all 16 of them with potentiometers. And what I'm running on here is our very fresh, off the press, USB MIDI inside of CircuitPython. Um, so let's take a look real quick over in my uh, Atom session here. Let me make me, yeah, I'll, I'll just step off to the side. Um, so if you look here in Atom, I'm importing USB MIDI, and I'm writing a guide on this, so there'll be some nice instructions for it. Also, I wanted to uh, shout out to Katni Rambor and Jan Goolsby, who both gave me some great help on the code for this, uh, as well as Scott and everyone on the CircuitPython team for getting USB MIDI and, uh, and Lamore for getting those working inside of CircuitPython. Uh, so just like we could with uh, Arduino before, now inside of CircuitPython, we can send out MIDI commands over USB. So that means you can plug this into any computer, pretty much any uh, laptop or any USB host device, and it can uh, receive MIDI notes on and off, and it can receive MIDI CC. Uh, so what I'm using is MIDI CC, which is continuous controller. It's made for knobs and sliders and those sorts of things. Um, so if you look in the code here, what's going on is I am uh, setting up my MIDI out port, and then I'm setting a knob count of 16 knobs. Um, and just a note, this library is so new that right now it doesn't really have any high-level commands. It's a little bit low-level, so this will be getting nicer and neater uh, going forward. We'll have a MIDI CC command and a MIDI note on command and MIDI note off command. But right now what I'm doing is I'm generating byte streams. So if we look um, past some of the setting of the ranges, the knobs, typically MIDI CC is a 0 to 128 value. Um, and if we get down to, uh, this is some of the code that Jan created, who's C. Grover on our, our forums, uh, some of the code to give us sort of virtual detente between uh, ranges, which uh, is working really well. Uh, so we're not sliding all over and, and bouncing values. Uh, and if we look down here at the very bottom, here's, here's the part that matters, MIDI out dot write, and then here's my byte array, and this is a hex value that says send a CC. So there's a, a table of MIDI commands, uh, MIDI message expects a, uh, uh, a type of MIDI um, announcing the type of packet that's coming or the, the type of message that's coming. Um, so this one says that it's going to be a MIDI CC. Uh, and then which MIDI uh, channel, uh, sorry, CC number. So CC numbers are 0 through 15. And then the value of that, which can be 0 to 127, and then I'm getting that from the knob that I'm using. Um, so if we want to see a practical example of this, um, one thing we can do is open up any kind of MIDI monitor, uh, but the, the type on that's a little small. So what I decided to show this with is... Uh, Let's see, can you still... Someone tell me, are you hearing a constant noise? I want to see before I go over into there if that's actually something you guys can hear. Okay, hold on. What about now? Can you hear me, and is there a lot on top? Because my, my uh, audio range looks really bizarre. Bunch of clicks, low frequency. That should be better. Yeah. Okay. Let me bring this back up. Sorry about that. Um, this is going to be a challenging one. I make sure I have a backup plan of how to do it, but um, so I'm trying to share my audio coming out of this program along with my mic, uh, and it's it's not set up very elegantly. Um, but right now, what I want to show you is actually just visual. So uh, what we're seeing here, this is a really nice um, 
open source modular synthesizer, kind of a virtual modular synthesizer program called VCV Rack. And what you're seeing now, actually, I'm going to, uh, I'm zoomed up to the full extent, but hopefully you can see this well. Uh, what I have in here is one module that deals with incoming MIDI, and it's made just for incoming MIDI CC. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my Grand Central, which is plugged in, and let's also throw that there, just so you can see that. Um, so there's my Grand Central with its 16 knobs. And then inside of the VCV rack, what I'm going to do is you can see I've got all 16 knobs here are these 16 CC inputs. And I'm just going to drag a few of them to a little voltmeter. And then you can see as I change the knobs, we're getting uh, an interpretation of my MIDI CC values. So really this is MIDI I think I have these clamped right now. Let's, let's go to these ones. These will be from 0 to uh, 127. So what that's going to show up as is 0 to 10 volts. Uh, so really that's MIDI CC 0 through 127. And then what happens after your MIDI values leave the Grand Central, hit your machine, and then land in a piece of software, is that could be um, a software synthesizer like your... Um, GarageBand or Ableton Live or Logic or Reason, any software synth is going to have a way to connect up your CC values coming from different CC numbers on different MIDI channels to do stuff. So VCV Rack works in this um, sort of virtual version of voltage-based synthesis, and that's why it's saying 0 to 10 volts as I uh, increase these here. Uh, and then on, uh, actually, C. Grover's suggestion, uh, he and I were chatting about this, uh, we realized that some values that you want to change, like uh, a mixer or a, an effect or a delay or a, um, a filter, you might want this full range, 0 to 10 volts in, in that world. But for specifying sequence notes, so uh, pitch values, Typically, you don't want to run this bigger than a grand piano level of possible frequencies on a tiny little knob. So you'll clamp it down to like a couple of octaves or three octaves. So that's why you'll see when I change this first knob here, it actually has a bottom of this 1.9 volts and the top of 3.8. So those are, I think I have them set to, if we look back at my um, Adam for a second. What did I set those at? Those are from 36 to 84. So that's like a 49 note keyboard, like a mini keyboard. Um, so then you can imagine uh, if I, here's a second setup that I have. If we look over here, what I'm doing now is I'm mapping uh, pretty much all, I've missed one here, but pretty much all of my 16 knobs that live on this uh, Metro, um, or rather Grand Central, uh, to things that I want to control in VCV Rack without using my mouse. So that means as I, um, you can see the, the knobs glow green right around here uh, in this sequential switch 8 to 1. So you can see as I pipe that value up really high on the first 8 knobs, you'll see those turn green. Uh, and that's because it's giving a positive, a 0 to 10 positive uh, output. So I can control the note values on this sequence. Uh, using these first eight knobs, and then I'm controlling other things like the mix and what, um, if you look over here at this macro oscillator, uh, which is right above where I'm pointing right now, that has uh, a bunch of different choices for the wave shape of your oscillator, and I'm picking them um, by turning this knob, which I've clamped down to a negative 5 volt to 5 volt using some voltage conversion in the program. Um, so let me try and see if I can get you some audio out of this, and if not, I'm going to hop over to the laptop and use an amplifier. So uh, I will stop talking for a minute and see if we can get audio out of here.
good. Okay, that brought my audio level back. So, um, real quick, I just want to ask in the forum, did that work? Could you actually hear um, distinct audio coming from Rack? I hope so. Uh, working, okay. At least a few minutes ago, it looks like it was working. Um, good. So, now let's hop over to the workbench for a second. I just want to kind of show you a little more about the build. Uh, and uh, the differences between this one I made and a simpler one that you can make on a breadboard. So I'm going to unplug this and we'll head over to the workbench. And I'm going to bring this overly hot tea. Is anyone with me on this? Why is tea so much hotter? Even if you start with the same temperature water, I really think it's a thermal mass thing. I think you go through grounds. And it takes more time, right? This, is, this tea bag can't possibly do anything to cool it. That's what I think. All right, it's cooled off a bit. That's better. I don't mean to offend tea drinkers. I really don't. Um, let me bring up the chat over here. Hey, Discord chat. And turn off my audio. There we go. Good. Tea. Earl Grey hot. Yes. Uh, so, all right, so let's pop, uh, pop this over to the workbench cam and... Put me over in the corner there. By the way, I'm still loving my little Andy Clymer mini keyboard. This thing works great, better than my cigar box ever did. Um, so here is what I'm using in this simplified version of the build. And what is, the, oh, do I have an overlay? I have a, I have a mysterious green screen overlay still happening over here. Sorry, let me, let me hide that. It's, it's this little disembodied cord. That's freaking me out. Let's see, which, which screen is that? That's that, okay. Um, everything is crazy when it rains. When it rains, I lose my mind. Uh, so here's what I've got, uh, a simplified version of it. I can, in fact, zoom in even a little closer. So this is, sorry about the camel wobble. So this is the Grand Central. And you can see along the bottom here on this version, I'm just using um, the 3.3 volt and ground, and then I've got uh, four um, jumper wires plugged into the analog inputs A0, 1, 2, and 3. These I'm just, I'm not actually using, I don't have extra knobs, I just needed to stick those somewhere so they wouldn't actually short something. And then over here on the breadboard, I've just got some of our little uh, trim potentiometers uh, that are plugged into uh, the ground on their left leg in this orientation, and then the signal, the wiper goes out to those analog inputs, and then the voltage of 3.3. Um, so if you uh, change these, you're gonna generate different um, voltages that are read by the analog in, and then those are what are translated into our 127 values, uh, or 128 values to send out over MIDI. Now, if I take this, uh, let's break down a little bit more uh, a simpler little sequence. I think I'm going to try to let you see this view and zoom in here. There we go. In fact, yeah. Okay, so you can see I've just got a, uh, I've, I've set this knob here to four, so I'm just reading four values. Let's set that to one. So I'm creating a sequence here with just one step in it. So it's just going to repeat over and over again. And then I'm going to start a clock running. Okay, and hopefully you can hear that. Sounds like your alarm waking you up. And now that uh, value coming out of that zero CC number is running into that first step. That's mapped to this A1 um, knob. So now I can... Hopefully you can hear that well enough uh, to hear the notes. Now, an interesting thing is, since this does not send a continuous voltage out, it's instead sending these distinct 128 values, you will only hear steps. You're not going to hear it sliding between notes. It's already sort of quantized to steps. It's a chromatic step. So I think I've got that one set to, again, like a 48, uh, 49 note out. 
Um, so now if I switch this up to two steps, it's reading these two. Oh, and by the way, that probably sounded weird to you because I am using a quantizer in here. I was not getting half steps, so that was only whole steps. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's go back to one step. This is what the actual... So inside of here, I had set a quantizer so that I would only get whole steps, just because it sounds kind of nice when you're building uh, these little multi-step sequences. So now go up to four steps, and if we turn them all to the far left, we're going to get one note repeating. And there we have a nice little four note uh, sequence repeating there, all coming from the CC values. Now, let's stop that. And one other thing, if we have time, what I wanted to do is uh, let's close that down and open up Tractor, which is um, sort of virtual DJ software. If you remember the uh, Pizza Box DJ project, that's it right there. You can see it in the back of the uh, workshop there. Um, that was Circuit Playground, uh, original Circuit Playground, running an Arduino program, and I was uh, controlling this program, Tractor. Um, if I, let's see, I want to use the other one. So let me switch over to the other one, which I think might have full range going right now from the knobs I need. Um, so I'm plugging this, this nice little guy in, and then what I can control, if you look at Tractor, is I've set four knobs to be uh, some of the effects. So I'm just going to throw a song in here. Um, and then run some gating effects on it. So let's see if we can hear that. And then I'm going to turn on this effect, and now I can crank up the gating. So it sounds like someone's hitting like a mute, like a terminator, on what, eighth notes or something. So there's 16th notes. And then you can do some shaping of that. The song ran out. There's just a tiny bit of a song. All right, so you can imagine uh, a, a nice little button box that you can program, or a knob box, is really convenient for uh, using pretty much any kind of music software that accepts MIDI, which is kind of all of them. Um, I haven't hooked this up to my iPad yet, uh, but I think it should work. I just don't know if the current draw is too great with the Grand Central being plugged in, um, but I suspect not because we were able to do it with um, the Trellis M4 and that has a bunch of LEDs on it. So I think we'd be uh, able to hook this up too. Now let's, uh, let me switch cameras real quick and I will unplug this and then just, uh, uh, we're almost out of time, but just the last thing I wanted to do is show uh, how I built this onto the proto board um, and this is obviously really crammed in there. Uh, ideally, the proto board wouldn't have a space in it here because I want to treat these like 16, but there's a space there for a reset button and there's nothing to plug into. So this was the best I could do. And uh, it is, like I said, a bit of a building a circuit board with wires sort of affair under here. So if you look, um, yeah, got that. Oh, let's switch cameras again, sorry. So. I had to, uh, I was able to use some direct uh, connections in some cases using the, there's a ground and a power rail down the middle um, to flip flop back and forth between the, the legs on the two rows. Uh, and then I had to build my own little power rail in the end there. So it's um, kind of kooky, but uh, you know, ideally it would be made with, as a PCB. And, uh, and I know that, uh, some of you out there like to etch your own PCBs or use a mill, so that might be a fun project to make a little more ideal version of it. But uh, it is, I think, pretty cool that you can take one of the sort of off-the-shelf proto boards and get yourself that nice of a, of a little uh, build. The uh, other thing I was thinking of doing, and I haven't yet, is an enclosure. This is like a $4 plastic explosure, explosure, e enclosure uh, I got at All Electronics. Um, 
and it is a really nice fit for our friend here, the Grand Central. Um, so it could fit on there neatly like that, maybe drill these out to, to be the holes. But uh, right now it's fairly playable. I, I worry about the knobs wiggling a little bit because they're not held down with the retention tabs. I snipped those off uh, to get everything to fit. Um, so I may do something to secure them to the board and to each other uh, to make it a little, little sturdier. But uh, a, a really fun little package uh, using our Grand Central uh, to build your own MIDI button knob. So uh, let's head back over into the chat and I'll see if anyone's got any questions. Otherwise, uh, we can wrap it up and we can, we can uh, all head off and build our own MIDI button boxes. How about that? Um, so let's see, chat, what's what? Hey, how about we pop up the chat right here? In fact, hey, there we go. Uh, do Music was in there, it was just really low. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, after the show, I'll link to that box I'm using, sure thing. Um, I will crank this sound up for, for the heck of it and, and play that again, because I think it's a neat example. So that could be crazy loud, but let's find out. Um, and it's a short sample, so I gotta get it right. Here we go, let's, let's switch these out. Um, and there to there. Let's see if we play that. Um, it would be nice actually to do some buttons or rotary encoders as well um, because sometimes you just want to hit, hit a straight up button and this will interpret MIDI buttons as um, anything you want. All right, why are you not playing? Would I break? Hmm. Oh, did I use one of the other? I do have some mixer. Yeah, something here is set as a mixer and I think when I was just fiddling with it, I, which, which one of you? Oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, let's try it. That, I think you probably heard, but it didn't work quite as well. Something going on there. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's Tractor I'm using there. There's also a free um, Mix, M-I-X-X -X is, is DJ software that'll let you um, do the same kind of stuff. And uh, let's see, yeah, I should have looped it. You're right, Charles, I'm out of practice with Tractor. I haven't used it in forever. Uh, 3D printed custom box would be nice. Some laser cut stuff would be great. Um, the uh, little knobs I'm using are, no, are uh, actually they're they're knobless pots, so they have little um, indicators on them. These little guys here, uh, I got them from all electronics as well. But I think we're going to look uh, at carrying some similar ones in the store. And then there's some others. I don't have an example right here. There's some others I like that are an awful lot like our rotary encoders. They're this nine millimeter footprint, and they do have a little threaded shaft, uh, so you can panel mount them and put. Uh, they come in like different either the six millimeter shafts or the D slot ones or the T18 spline ones. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to get us some, uh, yeah, thank you, Donald, he calls me Mixmaster Park. That was not my finest example ever. Um, I, think I, I think I angered it by unplugging and replugging my uh, MIDI box there uh, while Tractor was open because I don't think it was responding very well. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, about wraps it up. Let's see, any other questions? Um, Grand Central is still out of stock. Yes, we, we only did 50 to start with and uh, we're taking feedback on those from some beta testers and then soon we'll be stocking it regularly. So please uh, head to the store and uh, don't forget you can use that coupon for 10% off. And if you want to get the Grand Central, you can sign up to be notified. I know we only notified 50 of the many, many more than 50 
excuse me, people who uh, originally um, signed up, but we really are excited to be making more and getting them into people's hands because it's a very cool, uh, very cool board. Impressive. Uh, there's also it's like 70 digital ins that you can use. So I don't have a proto board big enough to add that many buttons, but you could certainly um, consider the Grand Central as, as a good um, board for projects that have a lot of I.O. because that's something it's amazing at. Uh, and let's see, any other questions over there in chat land? Uh, C. Grover comment says it'll fit behind a Eurorack panel. So that's nice, the, uh, the form factor of this if you gave it five volts internally, which is uh, pretty common inside of Eurorack. Oh, I, wow, I plugged this in wrong. I'm surprised anything worked just there. <laughs> I had it off by a row and I somehow didn't fry it. Ooh, that's, that's questionable. Let's see, is it really still working? Hold on, I'm gonna check on rack. Yeah, wow, that's robust. I plugged that whole proto board in off by one and yet somehow it sort of did things. Yikes. Uh, and that's the beauty of a live demo. So, uh, all right, well, hey, thank you again so much for stopping by today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the project. Please uh, take a look in the Learn system in the next couple days. I'll have a guide up for that so that you can build your own. Uh, and if you want to build one with fewer knobs, you can use other boards. Uh, I think you could use six knobs on a Metro M4. But um, yeah, having Circuit Playground now running USB MIDI and that many inputs, I couldn't help myself but to make the giant knob box. So thank you everyone so much for stopping by, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.